Hey, people, now another royal wedding is on the way. We'll tell you all about Princess Beatrice's romantic engagement. And speaking of royals, we've learned Meghan Markle's nickname for baby Archie and can't get enough. Well, I called my boyfriend and then she took the phone. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Actress Lucy Boynton tells us how boyfriend Rami Malek's mom came to the rescue after her bad audition. No, but this is my first day. I'm an intern, just like you. One of our favorites, Patricia Heaton, is here for her new CBS comedy, Carol's Second Act. I got my heartache medication. Country singer John Party has a new album. He's telling us what he's excited for fans to hear. So live today on People Now. Let's go. <laughs> Happy Thursday, everybody. Welcome to People Now. We're glad to see you. Today is National Pancake Day. Mm -hmm. We're having a delicious debate here at People Now. Pancakes or waffles? What do you guys think? Waffles. What? No! Waffles! Uh, lame. Wow. I I'm, like pancakes. I'm pancakes, too. Okay. Now, here's the deal. Here's why. So I, I take my girls out to, we do breakfast for dinner at a diner close yeah. by, and I don't love sweet food, so pancakes can still kind of be savory. Like, you don't yeah. have to drown it in syrup. I just syrup. don't get the appeal of waffles. That's just me, though. The too crunchy, stale. Mm, some angry crew members <laughs> over here. Yeah, oh yeah, maybe it's just never been good. Jenny, our EP is like, you just never had a good waffle. Okay, well, bring me a good waffle then. Yeah, are we, are we about to be surprised with a tray of good All waffles? All right, anyway, we could go on no. about this forever, <laughs> but we want to know your preference. Maybe you like buttery pancakes, maybe you're a diehard waffle fan, like the people here. Vote in our people poll, send us your thoughts using the hashtag people now. Like Eggos, specifically, because you put them in the toaster. Yeah, I'm not, not into it. All right, we're going to check in on the results in a bit, but for now, here's what you need to know and what's trending for today. Royal wedding alert, everyone. Princess Beatrice and Eduardo Mapelli Mazzi are engaged. The Queen's granddaughter announced the exciting news on Thursday in a statement released by Buckingham Palace. According to the palace, uh, Mazzi proposed to Beatrice while on vacation in Italy earlier this month. Now, Beatrice and Eduardo said in a statement, we are extremely happy to be able to share the news of our recent engagement. We're both so excited to be embarking on this life adventure together and can't wait to be married. The wedding is set to take place in 2020. The couple released several photos of the engagement, some of which were even taken by the bride-to-be's sister, Princess Eugenie, who we track along with quite often around here. The proud sister shared the colorful photos that she took on her own Instagram, captioned in part, I'm so happy for you, my dearest big sissy and dear Edo. It's been a long time coming, and you two are meant to be. Beatrice's mom, Sarah Ferguson, posted the news to her own Instagram as well, writing, I know what a mother feels, so I have tears of joy. I'm so proud of this sensational news, Andrew and I are just the luckiest people ever to have two great sons-in-law. Eduardo got in on the Instagramming as well, posting a few of the black and white photo show, or, or shots alongside a very romantic caption. He writes, you will never be alone, my love. My heart is your home, hand in hand, today, tomorrow, and forever. Very romantic. Eduardo asked Beatrice to marry him with a bespoke platinum and diamond ring by British jeweler Sean Lean, a favorite of Meghan Markle. The ring crafted by Lean at his Mayfair Atelier is set with excellent cut diamonds of the highest color and clarity, all of which are ethically sourced. The ring was a collaborative effort with Mozzi, very much involved. Congrats to them. In more royal news, Prince Harry is continuing his tour of Africa solo. On Thursday, he left Meghan and baby Archie behind in South Africa and arrived in Botswana, kicking off his day with local school ch children, planting trees at the Chobe Forest Reserve. Harry was seen mingling with the school children and putting in a shift planting trees as well. The children grew the trees from seeds at school, and they'll be learning about tree planting and vital ecosystems. It's a great program, and the Duke of Sussex then visited a project for his charity, Sintabale. Harry set up Sintabale, which helps raise funds and awareness to support the mental health and well-being of young people whose lives have been affected by HIV. Did it all in 2006. Harry then joined Sintabale's Let Youth Lead Advocates in a camp activity which aims to instill confidence and peer support into young people coming to terms with living with HIV. Prince Harry then headed to Chobe National Park, where he dedicated an area of the forest to the Queen's Commonwealth Canopy. Situated near the border of uh, Namibia, Zambia, and Zimbabwe, this will help link areas of the Queen's Commonwealth Canopy across borders to facilitate the easier passage of wildlife to widen the range of their habitats. After continuing his solo part of the tour to Angola and Malawi, Prince Harry will reunite with Meghan and Archie in South Africa to finish out that visit. Meanwhile, we also learned that Meghan Markle has the cutest name for baby Archie. Here it is. She calls him Bubba. Little Bubba. Markle was overheard <laughs> saying, oh, Bubba, to a drooling baby Archie in a video from his first official engagement when he joined his parents to meet with South African human rights activist Archbishop Desmond Tutu and his daughter on Wednesday. 
During the visit, Tutu's daughter noticed that Archie was giving her more attention and joked to Archie, you like me best. Yes, you like the ladies better, yeah? And Megan agreed, he likes the flirts. <laughs> Harry also revealed that Archie is so busy, constantly wanting to stand, and Megan added, exploring. All right, let's move on to this. The Beatles' iconic Abbey Road album, featuring songs like Come Together and Something, turns 50 years old today. Abbey Road was the, la the last album John, Paul, George, and Ringo recorded together. Soon after, John let his bandmates know that he would be leaving the Beatles shortly before its release. Although Let It Be was released in 1970, it had already been recorded before Abbey Road. Now, to mark the occasion, an anniversary edition of the record will be re-released on September 27th. It's produced by Giles Martin, whose father, George Martin, was a friend and producer of the famous foursome. It will, it will contain outtakes and additional material as well. Now, the Beatles are, of course, one of the most famous and accomplished bands of all time. According to Guinness World Records, they have sold more than 1 billion records worldwide, have 13 studio albums, which they released all in the span of seven years. They have 22 UK singles, 17 of which spent 65 weeks at number one, and 15 of their UK albums spent 175 weeks at number one. Really incredible. One of the most notable works of Abbey Road, besides the famous tunes, is the cover art, which itself turned 50 on August 9th. That anniversary was commemorated with a huge celebration on that famous zebra crosswalk. The cover is so famous that throughout the years, fans and tourists continue to flock to Abbey Road and recreate the epic snapshot. I have done it myself. We're sure today it will be no different. It gets pretty crowded there. Big day for Beatles fans. All right, on to this. Actress Lucy Boynton, who you probably know best as Rami Malek's love interest in Bohemian Rhapsody, now dating him in real life as well is great in the new Ryan Murphy series, The Politician. You're gonna love this. And she plays actor Ben Platt's nemesis, but it turns out Lucy thought she blew the, the audition for this role. Well, who better to talk to throughout that disaster than your loving boyfriend, Rami Malek's mother? Watch this. I was watching an interview, you said that you thought you blew the audition. Yes. You go around the corner to a bar yes. to dr drown your sorrow. Yes, I did. And you called your boyfriend's mom. Yes, I did. And then I panicked while I was telling that story. Because you <laughs> said, uh, why, why was she the one to call? That stuck out to me as like, um, oh, that's interesting. Well, I called my boyfriend and then she took the phone. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, so well, he no, says no, like no, you're no, fine? I'm gonna and get and hard. No. <laughs> no, because Nellie is like the one that you call wow. and she's done the talk. So she just takes and she's like, no. Here's how it is. You are fine. You have all these like actors' anxieties, and this is what it's actually like. So she just kind of takes you down, not breaks it down. She's like the she... centering. Mm. Always. Always. Yeah, it was really funny. She said that Rami didn't even get a chance to say anything. Uh -huh. She just took the phone and gave her the pep talk. The politician hits Netflix on Friday, September 27th. We'll have a lot more with that cast in the next coming days. Really huge series. Mm -hmm. A lot of people are going to be talking about that. Yeah. And you have more for us in Star Trek. I do, Jeremy. We are kicking off Star Trek today with one star who's showing off her new physique. Jessica Simpson has been very committed to working out and eating healthy, and now she's showing off her new bod. The singer, actress, and designer revealed on Tuesday that she lost 100 pounds in six months since giving birth to her third child, daughter Birdie May. On Wednesday, the 39-year-old flaunted her post-baby bod in New York City in a tight-fitted dress that showed off all of her hard work. The dress also had a deep plunging neckline, and she looks great. The source tells people that when it came to Jessica losing the baby weight, she quote, set a goal and she went for it, adding she had a hard time not feeling like herself. Jessica was helped in raising her milestone by trainer Harley Pasternak and his co-trainer Sydney Leaves. The insider says they incorporated her favorite form of exercise, which is walking, saying, quote, Jessica had a trainer and she was very committed to working out. She also did a lot of walking. Walking is huge for her, mentally and physically. It's always been something she does to clear her head and for the steps. The insider also reveals info about Jessica's diet, and that included eating healthier foods, saying she limited foods that were fried and high in calories, and adds she believes in moderation, and she was conscious of her goal. At certain times, she allowed herself to indulge. Simpson revealed to People in July that she was working really hard to lose the weight. At the time, she said that it wasn't easy, but she was determined, saying, quote, I discovered I really like cauliflower. Who knew it could be a substitute for almost anything? In her Insta post on Tuesday, the mother of three wrote that she tipped the scale at 240 pounds, and she's now where she wants to be, writing, so proud to feel like myself again. Even when it felt impossible, I chose to work harder. We say, great job in reaching your goal, Jessica. You look great. Well, Twitter found its latest source of the giggles. One model's unique <laughs> runway walk has taken the internet by storm. Model Leon Dame closed the Maison Margiela's Spring Summer 2020 show for Paris Fashion Week with one very dramatic walk. Leon strutted down the runway in a belted leather coat, a neck scarf, black knee-high boots, and a hat. 
but it wasn't the outfit that captivated the audiences. ID Magazine shared a video of the interesting walk, and Twitter users have some thoughts here. One user referred to the model strut as being similar to, quote, a brash baby giraffe leaving a club. Wow. Very specific and interesting <laughs> take there. But you know what? I can't unsee it when you put it that way. The walk even got a reaction out of fashion show queen Anna Wintour. Fashion influencer Amy Song shared two videos of the model in her Insta stories. And in one, Amy caught Anna Wintour smiling. Amy captioned it, Anna approves. A lot of people are surprised by this because the Vogue editor-in-chief is usually pretty hard to please, or at least that's the reputation she has. Several videos caught Anna in the background with her signature black sunglasses, following Leon down the runway with her gaze. Anna recently said that when she's sitting front row at a show, she's looking for something to make her smile. Well, mission accomplished, you did it. The model was given the honor of closing the show. He definitely did shut it down. The, the New York Times referred to Leon as a model to watch back in 2016. So what captured Anna's attention and warranted a smile? Was it the intense walk, his facial expressions, maybe all of the above? We're not sure, but if you can impress Anna Wintour, you have quite the career ahead of you. Those are your Star Tracks for today. I thought it was impressive. And isn't that kind of what you want to do in that environment, oh, right? Yeah. Like really work it's it and own fierce. it? It's super fierce. There's a lot of memes out there. Yeah. Like walking into the weekend, like, you know. <laughs> exactly right. Um, stay with us. Country singer John Party's here talking all about his new album and upcoming tour. And Patricia Heaton, she's one of our favorites. She joins us to talk about her very funny show, Carol's Second Act. We're looking forward to talking to her. Stick around. All right, we've been asking you to vote in our great People Now debate of pancakes versus waffles. Let's take a look. I hope it's, yeah, it's pancakes. <laughs> so satisfied. Yeah. yeah. Now I feel bad for being so hard on waffle waffles. lovers. Waffles, sorry waffles lovers. Um, waffles and chicken <laughs> though is amazing. I don't know if you've ever done that. I've never done the savory Fried chicken with the, oh, so good. Yeah. All right, keep voting. But for now, we move <laughs> on to this. I'm getting deported and that's all there is to him. He's gonna get shipped out of the damn country. I don't know if I'm ready to let him go. <laughs> The trailer for season 10 of The Real Housewives of New Jersey dropped on Wednesday, featuring a rare and pretty tense on-camera exchange between Teresa Giudice and her imprisoned husband, Joe Giudice. Now, Joe has been away from the New Jersey home he shares with Teresa and their four kids, Gia, Gabriella, Melania, and Adriana, since he began serving his 41-month sentence for mail, wire, and bankruptcy fraud in March of 2016. He was released from prison this past March, but is being held in the custody of Immigration and Customs Enforcement at the Clinton County Correctional Center in Pennsylvania, awaiting a decision on his deportation ruling. And while Teresa has stood by her husband's side thus far, she's also been realistic about the fate of their marriage should he be deported, admitting on The Real Housewives of New Jersey Season 9 reunion that she's not doing a long-distance relationship. Now, the drama with Teresa and her family continues to unfold during a heated phone call where Joe claims he never wanted to walk down the aisle when he and Teresa wed 20 years ago. He said, quote, like I even wanted to get married, no. Whoa. His comment leaves Teresa frustrated, obviously. Her eldest daughter, Gia, who was listening in on the phone conversation, fires back at her mother's conversation, saying, that's your personal business with my father, so enough. Now, the fight comes as cheating allegations swarm Teresa after photos surfaced of her holding hands with a younger man. Yeah, meanwhile, Teresa won't be the only one bringing the drama this season. Jennifer Aiden will find herself in the hot seat, battling with Melissa Gorga, while Dolores Catania and Jackie Goldschneider get real about some personal troubles. And then there's Margaret Josephs, who gets into a physical battle with a friend of the housewives, Daniel Staub, who blames the Macbeth collection owner for the end of her marriage to Marty Caffrey, calling her a homewrecker. Yay! New storylines to keep up with here, yes. right? Season 10 of The Real Housewives of New Jersey premieres November 6th at 9 p.m. on Bravo. Here's one more teaser to get you excited for the new season. These women would hold a bloody knife, stab you in the back, and say they didn't do it. I don't trust anybody. If you keep poking at a bear, eventually the bear's gonna eat you alive. Oh my God! I'm a mother. That's my job, and I take it very seriously. Jennifer is trying to cause problems. The only achievement you've ever had is marrying someone rich. Fred Swinstone calls. He wants his outfit back. She literally makes the Jersey girl and me come out. No, no. Hello. Don't you ever. She's a walking yeast infection. Margaret's the reason we went through a divorce. Marty, I'm not letting you go back to her. That bitch needs to be put on mute. Home wrecker. Don't be digging for gold. Fix your soul. Will we be starting rounds right away? I hope so. I've waited a long time for this day. A long time to be chief resident? Me? You think I'm chief resident? No! No, this is my first day. I'm an intern, just like you. But you have a clipboard. Yes, 
I love clipboards. But you have a long coat, like a resident. Oh, it's not a long coat, I'm just short. <laughs> but you're older, yes, I know. <laughs> Older but wiser. Yeah. Patricia Heaton stars in the new CBS series, Carol's Second Act, as a retiree who's taken on a new career as a resident doctor. Patricia joins us now. Thank you for being here. Thanks for having me I again. I first want to point out, this outfit is on point. Thank the you. The shoes are incredible. So Thank you can get you. a pan down. Oh, there we go. Quite these. the. Yeah, look how, can you see how there tall we go. they are? Yeah, right. they're nice. There they're like go. five there, inches. There you go. There's the shot. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Oh, is there a story so behind great. the shoes? Um, I'm a five foot six person trapped in a five foot two body. <laughs> and, and this is the way. I, I make that adjustment. There you go. Yeah, well, that's they are the story. They you. were secret shoes. They were brought out from the back room, I think. Yeah. Uh, yeah so. well, it's, 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 it's all yeah, working. It's all working. Yeah. Thank Let's you. talk about your character, Carol. Yes. Very fun. She's a really refreshing character. What do you love most about her? Uh, I think what's great about Carol Kenny, who goes back to medical school in her 50s um, after her husband divorces her and her kids leave the house, um, instead of sort of fading into, um, you know, rosé all day. <laughs> yeah. Which is an option. And it's an option. For, for um, she decides to challenge herself. And I think, you know, as much as we want this show to make people laugh, that's the first and foremost goal. I hope I inspire people to think about what they can do in their lives, what in their community they can be a part of to to keep them relevant and to keep your brain going and to feel a part of something. I like that, and the breaking of expectations, right? And, and yes. redefining expectations and things. And, and sort of, um, go, you know, conquering your fears and going outside of the box a little bit and sure. challenging yourself. The whole idea of second acts, if you ever retired from acting, what would, what would the second act be for you? Well, I, you know, I watch so many of those murder shows that oh, yeah. maybe I, I think you... I'd like to be a detective. Oh, okay. Oh. I, I didn't know which way that was oh, going. So you thought, or serial <laughs> killer. Life of crime. Yeah, detective or serial killer. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes. Do you see yourself retiring ever? Um, no, I, I would really prefer to die on a sound stage, I think, you know, um, as, as opposed to the actor's home, although I hear it's a very nice place. <laughs> um, By the way, I think fans, all of us are happy to hear that. We want you to just keep going. <laughs> right. No, seriously. You like, mean they all want to see me we, die on no, stage? No, no, no. We, well, we all want you to just continue. <laughs> no. Continue in your yes, career. Yes, well, thank you. Yeah, I think so. I mean, I think, you know, we'll see how long this show goes. I hope it goes a long time. Yeah. It's a wonderful cast. We love each other. We have very different generations on the show. There's Kyle McLaughlin and myself. Right. And, we're the only ones that remember the show Rifleman, which as I pulled it up to show our younger friends, I realized it was in black and white. Oh, wow. So yes, I'm very old. <laughs> um, and, but then we have our younger actors, uh, three of whom are Canadian. I don't know how they snuck in, but they're there. Okay. And we like them. Okay. And we love each other and we're having a great time. So why do you think, just in terms of philosophy and your philosophy, philosophy of life, it's important for people to try different things at different stages of their lives? Yeah, I think, you know, you need a reason to get out of bed in the morning. And I think what happens at this stage of the game, you, you've been doing your kids, you know, um, you've been working a lot and, and you can get to a stage where those things are taken away and you're trying to figure out who you are without those things. It's a challenge for women in particular, um, but men too. And so um, I think it's important for your own mental health, your spiritual health, um, and the world needs us. The world needs our experience. We've We've had to sacrifice, we've suffered losses and disappointments in life. We know how to handle those things. We know how to handle grief. We know how to handle success. We know how to balance those things. And I think that's something we can pass on. I wonder about this, for someone like you who's had so much success, yeah. does it get to a point where it's, it, it would be tempting to just be like, well, I've been there, done that. Like, like you've hit so many great marks. Yes. That what, what makes you excited? I, I think for the art, and you know, maybe that's too heavy a word for what I do, but for the craft, yeah. let's say, um, that's always challenging. I don't get blasé about that. Sometimes when you're, um, you know, being, doing award shows or that, or publicity, except not, of course, People Magazine. <laughs> you love I'm always that. fresh I here. I would never phone it in. This is, these are my people. I used to work here. <laughs> But, you know, you don't worry so much about the, the bells and whistles surrounding the, the, the business of show business. Don't worry about that too much anymore. Uh, it's kind of freeing, of actually. Yeah. Yeah. Now, your character, Carol, is a decade yeah. younger than you. At a yeah. time where ageism is pretty prevalent in Hollywood, yeah. it could have went to a younger actress playing older. Mm -hmm. How great is it that that wasn't even a factor? Um, I, you know, pretty great. I mean, I kept thinking I looked too young to even play 50. You look amazing. People kept assuring me, no, we believe you. <laughs> <laughs> like, no, 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 it's fine. I don't this think anyone will buy it, <laughs> frankly. <laughs> the biggest stretch. Yes, of course. I, would, I used to think I looked like Angelina Jolie also. So I think I have body dysmorphia. <laughs> but in like a great way. But in, in a like great a great way. way. <laughs>
<laughs> okay, well, let's talk about this. Okay. Ashley Tisdale plays your daughter, and you yes. mentioned Kyle MacLachlan um, as this potential love interest. Yes. We'll see what happens. Yeah. Um, what is time with this whole cast, with with the three of you, look like yes. when you're not shooting? Well, the whole cast, actually. I mean, Ashley Tisdale. We, we've, I've even known about Ashley from High School Musical. Yeah, right. And she's the most adorable, wonderful person. And if any of anybody watching comes to a live taping and Ashley's in the, in the episode, she may get up and sing for everybody, which Whoa, she has done, yes. Cool. But our cast loves each other. When we leave rehearsal, we start WhatsApping each other and making sure that everybody knows we're going for coffee now and what are you doing right now, even though we saw each other five minutes ago. Yeah. So we're all kind of weirdly in love with each other and it's a great, I fun thing. That. Yeah. You've had so many amazing co-stars over the years, some great leading men. Will we ever see you reunite with Ray Romano? Well, I did get to do one episode of The Middle with him, mm -hmm. but now he's working with Martin Scorsese and Robert De Niro, so I don't know if he'll have anything to do with me. It's yeah. Yeah. Although I just was at his Labor Day party, so he's still the same. Guy, right? So, yeah, you went on The Middle. Will he ever come on Carol's second act? Um, if, if he can fit into his busy schedule, I would love him to come on. Yeah. Yeah. I think he should. Yes, yes. We heard that you kind of consulted him a bit, got some advice for, from him for Carol's second act. Yeah, this is a whole new ball game for me as executive producer, and I'm weighing in. And I just didn't, I don't know the protocols of when do you tell the writers you want to change here or there. Do you give them a chance? Do you do it early on to get your notes in quickly? Do you wait and give them a chance to to discover it themselves? And you know, it's that kind of thing. Um, do I talk to the actors about things, or do I let the other producers do it? It's it, you're juggling a lot of roles, and so um, Ray sense. was really helpful because he did that all through Raymond, and, okay. and he uh, he was really helpful. That's really interesting, and I love that you guys maintain that, as a fan, that yes. you maintain that kind of relationship. Yes, yeah. Um, and like everybody loves Raymond the Middle, obviously this fan favorite. Where do you see the Hex today? Uh, the characters? Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, you know, I think they did a great job in the season finale, in the series finale of wrapping it up for everybody. Um, and so um, I, I think they're all living their, their heck style life <laughs> where they somehow make it through, even though they're doing a lot of mistakes. But I just met with Eden um, oh, last yeah. week and we're kind of developing a show for her. So really? Yeah. So that you'll EP as well? Uh, hopefully, if it all if it all works out. What is it about? I can't tell you. Ah, <laughs> but right. you'll be the first to know, my People magazine. Uh, there yeah. we go. Well, that's very exciting. Congrats yes. on that. Hopefully. Yes. Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. Well, Thank it you. It just became fall. Do you and your family have any is fall it? traditions? Yeah, it's already end of September, uh, it's, uh, which hard is crazy. To well, it's Los Angeles where I spend most of my time. So just one day blends into another. You and don't do switch anything up for the season? Seasons? There's no seasons. There. <laughs> Have you been? There's yeah. no seasons. I, Plus, I'm on a soundstage where yeah. it's freezing, and you know, you just go in and you, you're wearing a winter jacket when you go to work. I do remember the the wildest experience of living in LA, driving in the beach communities. It's 80 degrees, and all of a sudden, the holiday like ornaments are hanging over the street. It's like, it's wait, very is it August or December? <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's December. It's Nobody December. can tell. You only know by the decoration. I don't yeah. know if you were paying attention earlier, but today is National Pancake Day. Oh, the important <gasps> yes. stuff. Yes. Kind of fallish, mm -hmm. I guess. Mm -hmm. uh, do you prefer pancakes or waffles? It's our question of the day. Pancakes, blueberry, yeah, I know. blueberry pancakes. All oh, blueberry pancakes. Okay, blueberry, yeah. yeah. Are you sweet or savory? More sweet? Um, I don't like chocolate chip pancakes. That's too sweet. But I like it with blueberry, so it's okay. not as. The fruit is yes. like a happy medium. Yeah, happy medium. Yeah. All right, we're gonna take a walk down memory lane since you have oh. this illustrious career. Okay. In a game we like to call Oh, oh snap. snap. If we don't say it together, it doesn't <laughs> yeah, work. Yeah. So we'll show you okay. a few photos from your past. You tell us a memory or a fun story that comes to mind. Okay. All right, here we go. Starting with this one, 55th oh. annual Primetime Emmy Awards. This is you with the original cast of Queer Eye. Yes. What do you uh, think? Uh, first of all, that moment. I. You go back. That's my favorite favorite photo of all time, I think. Yeah. I love that photo, and I love those guys. What do you think of the reboot? Have you watched? Have you I have. Those guys? It's really yeah. interesting. They're really great, and um, I think it's a wonderful, feel-good show. Yeah, it is. It's, it's so interesting how that show ends up bringing people together in such a unique way. Yeah, yeah, definitely. All right, next picture. Okay. We have this one. Actress Doris Roberts gets a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. 2003. What do you remember from this moment? That Ray and I called each other ahead of time to make sure we were wearing the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Apparently. That's really funny. He's like, yeah, I got the light, the, the blue sweater. Yeah. Yes. That's great. Um, yeah, and I think I was rushing in from somewhere because I think I, I was out of breath. In that picture, I look like I'm just like, thank God I made yeah. it or Doris would never have forgiven me. Hey, what was your relationship like with her? Oh, she's wonderful. She was such a mentor and she's just one of those old showbiz broads. You know, yeah. she's like a working gal since she was about 15 and 
she was just terrific. You also received a star. Uh, I did, and how long did it take you to mention that as we're talking about? <laughs> Is that what you're waiting on? Yeah, yeah. like, uh, and. And, there you go. Now, that's gotta, that had to be, like, such a special moment. Well, when I first heard it, I called up my brother, and I said, uh, I'm getting a star on the Walk of Fame, Walk of Fame, and we both burst into laughter. I don't know why that was our reaction. That's funny. It was just like, what world are we in? Like, we, I never thought I would get more than a little bit of closet space, and I ended up getting a star on the Walk of Fame. I just want a little room for my and, wardrobe. Yes, exactly. Here we go, another one. Everybody loves Raymond series wrap party at Hangar 8. This was April 28, 2005. Yes. Wow, 14 years ago, and it premiered 26 years ago wow. this month. Yes. Um, I mean, just when you see a moment like that, I feel like on set, the whole, in the element, has got to be special. Well, they, they like moved the set of the show to the hangar, and oh, then cool. from there it went to the Smithsonian. Wow. So it was strange and wonderful. And I even thought about it today, and people ask me a lot about Raymond every time I do some press for things. And it's weird to be part of an iconic show because to me it's just a bunch of people I worked with and we all were having kids at that time and it was, you know, it was just a formative part of our lives and all our careers moved, leapt forward from that show. So um, it, it, it's, it, it feels very personal to me, but it's taken on a, a bigger part, a part in our culture yeah. so many people connect to it. I think yeah. this is Smithsonian piece is like next level. <laughs> yeah. That's, That's right. like forever. It is. Yes. Yeah. Thanks for stopping by. Thanks Talk for having everything. Yeah. Yeah. And everyone, make sure to tune into Carol's second act Thursday, September 26th at 9.30 p.m. Eastern Time on CBS. All right, Donald Faison stopped by People Now to get us ready for the premiere of his new thriller, Emergence. It's on ABC. We couldn't let him go without getting to know him a little better with some rapid fire questions. Watch. All right, guys, Donald Faison's here. We want to play a quick round of rapid fire. You ready for this? Let's do Let's it. Let's do it. If you could travel back in time, what period would you go to? I would travel back to when I was born and watch that happen. Oof. Okay. Gross. <laughs> Gross. Gross. If Darth Vader offered you a hug, would you accept? Absolutely. Yeah. You yes. don't think it's a trick? I would die in Darth Vader's arms. That's all that matters. <laughs> Creepy and romantic. What's the fastest speed you've ever driven in a car? 120. And no tickets? Thank goodness, no. The dude next to me got the ticket. <laughs> <laughs> I slowed down. I went 120, the car was going like... Yeah, right. And I was like, stop, 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 stop. And this dude zipped past, and then the police car, he zipped past right in front of the police car. Oh, my gosh. Stop when that Favorite carnival food? Favorite car... Uh, fried Oreos. Mmm. Choice. So would you rather be besties with Beyonce or Rihanna? I love them both. Can't have both. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to answer that one. Okay. <laughs> Something you can eat for a week straight. A week straight chicken and broccoli. Yes. So healthy. What's That's your how favorite? you lose the weight. <laughs> okay, all right. What's your favorite movie ever? Ever? Ever, ever. In the history of ever? Ever. The Empire Strikes Back. I am your father. Good one. If you had a spirit animal, what would it be? Donald Faison. If I had a spirit how do you rap this I, rapidly? I don't know. Uh, a wolf. Oh. A dire wolf. <laughs> a gigantic dire wolf. Yeah. Totally see that. Final one. Yes. If you had one superpower, what would it be? The ability to read minds. Yes, he's doing it right now. Thank you for being here, Donald Faison. I knew you were going to say that. Oh, my God. Look at that. Look at that. <laughs> Look at that. Here we go, guys. ACM and CMA award-winning country star John Party's new album, uh, Heartache Medication, the follow-up to breakout album, California Sun. It is out this Friday. John, thank you so much for being here. Good to see yeah. you. Nice to see you. Great to see you. All right, but let's take a quick look at the video for lead single, Heartache Medication. I got my heartache medication. All right, so you co-produced, co-wrote on the album. What does the concept of heartache medication mean to you when it comes to this song, but also then the whole album? I feel like the whole album, Heartache Medication, is uh, it's a feel-good. It talks about maybe sad subjects, but it's going to pick you up. If you listen to it, you're going to have a good time. And it's kind of got that medication of uh, to the soul. Kind of helping you through it. Yeah, are all the yeah. songs used for specific, as specific heartache medication? You got one for She Leaves You, one for She Cheats. <laughs> no cheating. Okay. No, we're keeping it clean. Good okay, clean. Okay, okay. Okay, there you go. Uh, by the way, in the music video, you're singing and dancing, yes. which I hear is kind of a big deal. You're not necessarily the dancer normally, right? Or I mean, I like to dance. Okay. It was just my first time with working with the your, your girlfriend. And your girlfriend, Summer Duncan, is yes. in it, right? So yes. does having her there, 
there. Did that make you feel better about kind of getting out there, breaking out some moves? I don't know. It was fun. Uh, we, got, <laughs> we got to practice. We, all, we like to dance. I think uh, every couple should explore dancing, and it's a lot of fun, and especially a good song like Heartache Medication. Yeah. And Out Tomorrow Everywhere, uh, just saying. Selfish plug. No, that's so. good. You should do it. <laughs> Wait, so you think every couple should explore dancing, like like dance lessons? Yeah, just why not? That's fun. It's a it's a it's a thing to do. It's something other than watching Netflix. It's active. Do you guys do yeah. like line dancing, like mm. night out type thing, or no, ever no, do no. that? No, no, no. I don't really like line dancing that much. It is okay. fun, but I, I prefer swing dancing, two stepping. Oh, like, nice. Wow, like, is that a typical yeah. night out, like a date night? Nights Out have been uh, talking about this record so far. <laughs> but uh, w once we get to November, we'll see where it okay. will land. Do you see more choreography in your future, though? Just depends on the song. Yeah. Just depends on the song. Mm -hmm. The song's there. All right, a couple of your favorite songs on the album. What, what st stands out to you that you're, mm. you're really excited for fans? To, to uh, well, to? I mean, we, there's a lot on, there's five on the internet right now, or, or on all the album places. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Streaming services. Streaming services, yeah. like every platform. <laughs> Platforms. Yeah. Uh, I don't know that by now is awesome. Just like old times, Tide One On. Oh, Love Her Like She's Leaving. And then one of my favorites, Starlight, ends the record. It's a beautiful song. So, yeah, there's a lot. How about Don't Blame It on the Whiskey? Yeah. This one, uh, so you perform with Lauren Elena. Miranda yes. Lambert co wrote with you. What was it like? No, no, no. I'm sorry. Oh. Eric Church and Miranda Lambert wrote it. Eric Church and Miranda I was Lambert. not part of this song. They wrote it. Oh, yes. corrections coming in quick. So talk to me about that song and kind of working with Lauren and, and taking that whole thing on. Um, it was great. I've heard that song, oh, shoot, like 11 years ago. It was 2010 when I first heard it. That's probably not 11 years ago, but nine. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I loved it. It was a great song. It was written very well by Eric and Miranda. And it, we almost recorded it at California Sunrise. And it came back around for heart medication. I said, this is the time. And I, I sung with Lauren on the ACM Honors one time when we hosted together. And we loved singing together. We sounded great. And she's amazing. So When you get a song from someone like that, Eric Church and Miranda Lambert, do you then go back to them as you're recording it? Like, hey, what do you think of this? Or is it just kind of like, all right, it's yours. And then they hear the final product. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't. I just do what I wanted to do with okay. it and knowing that they were they they were going to hear it yeah and I want them to be proud of what I did so I worked really hard on that and because the last thing you want to do is go to an artist and be like hey what would you do yeah well right yeah, of course yeah. right because then what kind of art what am I what am I just like oh Eric Tim would do on the song he wrote yeah no that I want I want to this is me singing your song yeah. yeah. Speaking of Lauren Elena, we love her here on People mm. Now. She's on Dancing with the Stars. She's have you dancing. been watching her? I have. I, I don't watch a lot of TV, but you know, I got my Instagram, and she's been yeah. dancing away. She looks great, and she, I saw she was doing like the splits or something. I don't know. Was... She's very flexible. No, she's yeah. really like, hey, get it, girl. Yeah. Well, now that we've seen some dancing from you, we know that you like to dance. Would you ever do Dancing with the Stars? Who focused on music first? Yeah. <laughs> Dancing second, music first. I can okay. see it. I think it could happen. Yeah. Let's talk about this. Speaking of performing, you have an album release concert this Friday, New York City's Hammerstein Ballroom. Uh, then you're kicking off the Heartache Medication Tour. Two sold out shows oh, in man, Nashville. Oh, man, you got all the Ryman dates Auditorium. up there. Look there we that. go. October yeah, yeah. 1st oh. and 2nd. What do you think is going to excite fans the most if they come out to a show? What are you What are you sort of proud of about that experience? Well, we haven't played. We haven't been playing this long in all of our sets. We've been on tour with Dirk Bentley and Luke Bryan. It's kind of been 50, 55. So we're going to a full like 85 minutes, okay. 75. I don't know, you know, it, it will fluctuate. But um, we're going to play songs from the B-sides, the first record, California Sunrise, and especially the new record, Heart of Medication. So we're not just going to just play all the new songs. You know, we're going to, it's going to be a good mix of all the, uh, all the songs from yeah. the past and, and the future. People, that, yeah. the ones that they love and they sing along with and the new yes. ones that they're gonna love. Yeah, you also we're gonna, have a song. We're gonna mix them in. Yeah. You also have a song off the album called Me and Jack. Yes. Um, what is the song about? Is it autobiographical? It's based on a true story. Yeah. If you really wanna get down to it. Uh, so we got this thing called a rider and back in the van days, it's just based on experience that so we'd, we'd get Jack Daniels. Right, the rider is what like you want to have on yeah, in the dressing room or the bus or whatever. We, yeah. we maybe had 50 bucks at that time to for whoever to get it. And it wouldn't be just like a little bit bottle of Jack Daniels. It would be like the biggest Huge. one yeah. you could get. <laughs> a jug. And exactly. it would always be gone at the end of the night. And there was crying. There was fighting. <laughs> there was late. There was hungoverness. I was like, you know what? Maybe we should take Jack Daniels off the rider. <laughs> and just from that little, that little story, I, I made this song and kind of just kind of made it more into a life, life situation and made a little mini story out of it off of 
that, you know, taking Jack Daniels off the rider. And it turned out to be a fun song. It, it, everybody's been there, everybody's kind of explored the uh, yeah. too much Jack yeah. Daniels. Yeah, Isn't right. really the best, or, or basically anything. But it was just, it's you know, just it's just a fun song. So things have a little rowdy. What's on the rider now? Water. Water. <laughs> uh, we do <laughs> like we do like some Tito's. Okay, okay, okay. so you still bring some in. Yeah, and um, Water. <laughs> a lot of water. <laughs> hey, for fans that are maybe that, that follow your music, that are getting to know you more, what would be the most surprising thing about you that maybe fans wouldn't guess or wouldn't know up front? I don't know. I really kind of put it all out yeah. there. Like I, uh, I, I don't have any weird secret stuff. Yeah. When you but. when you have downtime, what what do you like to do? If you have like you know weeks off at home. Is there, do you have like hobbies and things that you just kind of get into to sort of take your mind off of things? Or? Well, right now, uh, well, yeah, we have a lot. I hang out with my father a lot because yeah. he's very uh, mechanically inclined. We had to fix my 10-foot bush hog the oh, last wow. time I was back in Tennessee, and he kind of showed me how to do that, and we got it running, and now it cuts awesome. <laughs> We're currently uh, surveying and building a pond in the back. Whoa, back that's cool. 15 acres. We're going to okay. build a little pond around this big oak tree, and so... A lot of the time is um, kind of working on the land, and me and Summer are a perfect night for for us. As she's cooking dinner, and we're just hanging out on the back deck and just just hearing nothing. Yeah. Oh, that sounds wonderful. That. Being in New York City, that sounds like a dream yeah. come true. And that true. pond, like that's I know. A nice, nice life. <laughs> All right, got. we're gonna play yeah. a country music edition of Spill the Tea. Ready? Ooh, get ready. We'll give you the name of someone you worked with before, oh, or man. from the country world. You want us to tell tell us something that fans wouldn't know about them. So okay. the easier the better. Okay, here we go. We start with this. You toured with Luke Bryan. Spill the tea on Luke Bryan. Something about him we wouldn't know. Oh man, Luke Bryan. He is very, <laughs> very funny. And a lot of the things that we can say together at one point we've had too many dr drinks should just stay on the bus. <laughs> Never ever be heard. Okay. Right? Cause he's like a brother. It's like, yeah. you know, you get together. It's like, it's just, he's funny, but he's a sweetheart of a guy. He got me a really cool, bad present at the end of our, uh, our touring. He got me a broke down bulldozer. And so me and my dad spent a lot of time fixing the bulldozer. Oh Thanks, wow. Luke. Okay. There you go. And the funniest thing is he's like, buddy, I mean, you can't buy that, right? That's priceless. <laughs> the you you and your dad bulldozer. working on the bulldozer all the time? I mean, you can't oh buy that anywhere. God. By the way, your Luke Bryan impression is spot on. That's <laughs> yeah. the surprising thing people don't know about you right there. Uh, we just discovered it. Uh, but, that's amazing. <laughs> all right, you've also toured with Dirk Bentley. Spill the tea on Dirk Bentley. I don't know if you can top the Luke Bryan story. Oh, Dirks, Dirks, don't. He's a, I mean, I'll throw him on the bus a little bit. He will. He will fart and walk away. Oh. <laughs> the crop duster, I think, is what that's called. Oh, and it's like, I don't know. He, his diet fluctuates, but at one point, like, <laughs> he was vegan, and it was like, clear the room. Oh, okay. Like, get out of here! <laughs> Leave! <laughs> like, okay, oh, there you go. Sorry, Dirks. All right, so spill the tea on your friend Marin Morris. Oh, Marin's uh, awesome. I love Marin. She has got a, a bulldog for my mom. Oh really? A little little pancake and uh, it was a gift from your mother. Well, yeah, this is kind of her and Ryan. Okay. Yeah, her, her and Ryan, and then I don't know. Marin's awesome. She's a one of my favorite songwriters, female songwriters, and she's just cool. Yeah. yeah. So nothing, nothing too juicy about her. Um, all right, That's you're featured on his newest album, "Spill the Tea" on Thomas Rhett. Huh, Thomas. <laughs> Man, I love Thomas. He's so furry. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, me and, and Thomas. Great wardrobe too. Me, me, yes, I love Tom. Me and Thomas go way back. Um, funny story. So when I first came to town, I kind of met Thomas, and we were both. I was 26. He was uh, maybe. I didn't think he was 21 yet. Okay. Uh, but I had long hair. We both had long hair. I wish we had a picture of us. Yeah. But we both had long hair, and we were like playing on like this dock in Florida, and. He was so excited. We were playing Joe's in Chicago, and he was going to open up for me. I think it was his first show ever. Wow! And a, acoustic, and uh, I think I don't, I, I can't put this in facts, but um, I think back in the day he opened up for us, and now he's playing Madison Square Garden. Oh, so, that's incredible. Round one. Yeah. Round one. Yeah. Round one. Yeah. Round one.
Yeah. Where it all began. That, yeah. That's Thanks to this guy. Right. Hey, thank you so much for being <laughs> yeah, here. So good to talk to you, man. Thank yeah. you. All right, everyone listen to Heart Egg Medication when it comes out Friday and head to johnparty.com slash tour to catch John out on the road. All right, one last look at our people poll. We've been asking you which you prefer more, pancakes or waffles. John, what do you, here. what's your go-to here? Whew. I, I gotta go with the waffles. Okay, waffles. Okay. Or the Eggo. The Eggo waffles, yeah, yeah. Pop them in the toaster. All right. The protein ones, if you're out there working out. Yeah, yeah. The protein there you ones. go. All right. All right, we'll be asking you a new question of the day tomorrow on People Now, so tune in for that. All right, coming up tomorrow, guys, we're joined live by actor Boyd Holbrook, who stars in Netflix's In the Shadow of the Moon. Plus, TLC's Paige Davis is also here live. Get ready for the toilet paper wedding dress challenge. Oh, man. Thing, and we're doing it. John, come back for Thanks that. Thanks for okay? watching. I'll be here. For now, we leave you with one last thing from Downton Abbey's Hugh Bonneville. Bye. Bye, guys. Hello, I'm Hugh Bonneville, and uh, this is One Last Thing. The last TV show I binge-watched was Big Little Lies 2. My son is dead, and I want answers. The last thing I Googled was a, a fine restaurant in New York to eat in, and the last song that stuck in my head was uh, Blame It On My Youth by Blink-182. And my last big splurge was a Tesla Model 3 that still hasn't arrived in Britain. Will you hurry up, please? It was meant to be with me in June. That's all.